Joining us now from House Homeland Security, Congresswoman Kat Kamek is back with us. It's always great having you on, Congresswoman. A pleasure. You know, this is a real wake-up call. This is like a hit you right between the eyes wake-up call. California is now telling their state residents, do not charge your electric cars now because the California state power grid faces rolling blackout amid a heat wave. But, Congresswoman, this is just like a week or so ago. California said it will ban gasoline cars in 2035. Really? So we're all going to get rid of our gas cars when they can't handle it? I, I mean, it's ridiculous, Liz. This is just another example of failed policy. And again, it's at the expense of policy because of the politics. I mean, Californians need approximately 80% more capacity on their electric grid to accommodate just the electric cars and the, the base load that they have now. I mean, this is absurd. 2035 is when they want to phase out gas-powered vehicles. One third of the uh, electric charging vehicles in San Francisco are broken. This is a broken policy. It's a bad idea. And Californians are going to be paying the price big time for it. Yes, yeah, so why should we trust them? They were all over the map with their pandemic lockdowns and mandates that failed. They broke their own yeah. rules. And they, I, I, I'm telling you, the majority of people in Sacramento don't have solar panels on their roofs. I'm betting on, I would bet money on that. Um, but you know, there's so many things, there are a lot of dirty, dirty green energy secrets Democrats won't talk about in their $369 billion green energy spending. You just mentioned a third of San Francisco's electric car charging stations are broken and the power they're gonna need to mm -hmm. power those cars. And they're gonna need a lot of oil and gas to power the electric grid, right? Because that's, what the, that's what's fueling the electric grid. Yeah, exactly. And this whole war that the left is waging on the oil and gas industry is is nonsense. It's purely political because all of these so-called clean energy jobs, all of this clean energy, it's all powered by oil and gas. And all these solar panels, well, guess what? They come from China. China is one of, if not the worst polluter in the world. And of course, we know that the lithium batteries, that they are one of the worst elements that we can add into the equation when we talk talk about the carbon footprint that they leave and the dirty mining aspect that goes into it, particularly yeah. from these third world countries and, that have no regard for environmental safety. And the other thing, too, is I mean, you've talked about this. Democrats got $80 billion, $80 billion in their Inflation Reduction Act for tens of thousands of new IRS agents. The CBO says they will audit the little guy in small businesses when half a trillion yeah half a trillion, about $500 billion of pandemic fraud flew out the door that everyone has to pay for. So they're going to audit people on the one hand, and then they're going to not do anything about pandemic fraud? You know what I mean? It's like it was it, jobless benefits fraud. It was pandemic jobless benefits fraud. It was PPP loans and more. Yeah, it's absurd. And they're constantly going after the little guy because the little guy is the easy target for big government. We know that the bigger that government gets, the more it wants you to be dependent on it. That's why they continue to grow these big government programs. But if you look around America today, nearly 20 million American families are behind on their electric bill. They don't need an IRS audit on top of it. And that's just assuming that they've done something wrong. But that's what we know big government does. It doesn't trust us, the people. Yet they are quick to turn a blind eye to people like Hillary Clinton and Hunter Biden and everyone else that lives by a double set of standards in this country. It is for the liberal left that we need to be concerned about that continue to live by this double set of rules. That's what we need to go after, not the middle class family that's making less than $75,000 trying to put their kids through school. It's absurd. It's wrong. And it's not the thing that I think Republicans are focused on, but the left sure as heck seems to be. Congresswoman Cameron, thanks for joining us. It's good to see you. Good to see you, Liz.